So the core hypotheses that I'm developing in my research are that an inclusive national narrative, one that's based on creeds, um, ideas, principles. As some of you have read um, Fukuyama's recent work on identity. He calls this creedal nationalism. That that, all else being equal, helps actually to support democracy. Whereas an exclusive national narrative, one that's based on fixed identities of race, religion, caste, ethnicity, religion being fixed in most parts of the world as an identity, um, undermines democracy, all else being equal. And before I kind of unpack those hypotheses and what I'm doing to research and, 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 and test these, um, I, wanna, I wanted to spend um, a moment on two questions I often get asked when I present this research. So the first question is, am I not really collapsing the distinction between patriotism and nationalism, right? So isn't patriotism kind of all the good stuff about feeling love for one's country and nationalism all the bad stuff? Well, no serious scholar that I know of nationalism actually takes that distinction very seriously. It's a very big part of the public debate, but the very same actions can look, can be described as patriotic or nationalist, depending on whether you like them or not, and what outcomes you think that they have. But to, to describe a phenomenon an ana analytically, um, it's important not to describe it based on its consequences, but to be able to describe the phenomenon in and of itself. Um, and love for one's country um, uh, certainly can just be part of, of so patriotism um, can, uh, some research has shown, quite easily slide into nationalism, when the circum when, especially when circumstances of threat arise. Um, the second question I get asked a lot is, wouldn't, isn't the ideal world one in which we don't have national identities at all, right? Why celebrate national identities? Why, um, why really promote them in some sense if um, the ideal world is one in which we all just are, um, our primary identities are ones that are based on our um, common humanity? Um, and the answer I give to that is that um, there's a lot of social psychology research that shows that human beings are, by their very nature, clannish, um, that they need communities, um, and that, in fact, the countries around the world that we've seen um, that don't have a national identity, that have come closest to not having a national identity, are not utopian, but in fact, very dystopian. And um, uh, what you see here is a picture of Somalia, um, where um, there is no uh, clear na national identity at all. So um, I go about this research, and as I said, I'm at the very beginning of this project, so this is a sort of a, a relatively um, light on a lot of evidence, but I'm, um, I'm going to tell you about how I'm going about this research in, um, in three domains. So the first domain is that I'm looking at, um, sort of to look at like for like, I'm looking at all countries that gained colonial independence in the um, 1940s and 50s and 60s, and looking at their founding constitutions and creating an index of inclusivity based on such questions as, does the preamble to the constitution, the part that begins with, we the people, um, is there a definition of the nation um, that mentions race, religion, uh, or region? Um, is there a religious or racial um, category that's required for to uh, either be in the head of state or to serve in an important distinction of government? And using these kinds of questions, I create an inclusivity index that um, I'm statistically looking at whether ha it has, that has a pattern with um, a whole bunch of databases that look at uh, democracy. So I'm in the process right now of putting that together. So that's the first way I do that. The second way that I do that, I investigate the relationship between nationalism and democracy, is that um, I'm looking at um, some experiments which show that when you um, look at, you ask individuals, um, how much are you willing to give to co-ethnics or co-religious, co-religionists in need? Um, and that when you actually 
prime individuals, for example, by showing them a national flag, they're actually, the diff they're, they're, everyone is more likely to give to their co-ethnics in most contexts. But when you prime them individuals by showing the national flag, they actually um, are less likely to want to give to, uh, they're, they're, they're equally likely to want to give to uh, members of their nation. So it very much shows that nationalism is a force for solidarity. And the third way, and that's the what I'm gonna talk about um, a little bit more tonight, is that I'm looking at countries that are largely similar, so three sets of countries um, that are largely similar on those explanations I gave you, um, but that have very different national identities at their founding. And I trace over time whether and how those national identities get used in moments of crisis.